be nice to get on with me neighbours But they make it very clear they've got no room for raving Upbeat and very successful. Tonight there are guests in Calamity Park, and here's one of their new numbers, Song of a Baker. Small faces are Steve Marriott, lead singer and guitarist, Ronnie Lane, bass guitarist, Kenny Jones, drummer, and Ian McLagan, organist. Uh, the number you've just heard, Song of a Baker, comes from their new album, and so does Lazy Sunday, which they released as a single about two months ago, and which is still hovering around the, the top 30. Uh, Lazy Sunday was written by Steve Marriott and Ronnie Lane, and it goes like this.
Sunday. Uh, the Small Faces' new album is one of the most idiosyncratic records on the market. It's called Ogden's Nut Gone Flake. It's packed in a circular jacket, and one side of the record is taken up entirely by a musical narrative called Happiness Stan. It's a kind of fairy story for our time. Uh, the Small Faces supply the music, and the storyteller is that master of gobbledygook, Professor Stanley Unwin. Here, then, is the story of Happiness, Stan. Are you sitting comfortably bold two square on your body? Then we'll begin. Once upon a time in a land of dreams Where the sky was silky something full of colored trees Like all fairy stories, this one begins once a polytito. And happiness Stan, whose whole life symbolized by the multicolored radiate and scintillate of the multi of the rainbow, lived in an ancient Victoriana sharapan. And this is the old type sit up and beg, rotate, fit, fit, poppy poppy with solid wheels all rotated there, very flat, even to squash your toe neighbors. Oh, yes. Now, he had a great problem. Because when Stan looked up in the heavenly boat as evening approached, he, he saw this half moon and dangly there and thought, Oh dear, where has escaped and gone or stolen strayed and begged this other half of the moony most? Oh dear. So he put his eyes down and walk it and walk it ploddy through the forry, thinking to himself, Oh folly for this other half moon. Oh dear. Where at, man, he thought. Where at? Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. 
Now, after many a long mile of stretch and walk it, Stan had a deep hunger grumbly in the tumblow, to which we all do, and wouldn't he, after Tritley, our huffalo down a hill and dale? Oh, yes. So he sit him down on a leafy banquet, reach in his pocket, and out come the minced meat sandwiches. When? Share Stan Minmeat's sandwich was so happy and grateful that he said, How can I repay your hospitality, Stan, for that? And Stan looked at the fly and said, Ah, wistful in his eyeballs since he laid there. If only you could tell me where the other half of the moon dangling in the heavenly boat has gone. This is my great worry. And the fly said, Oh, if I knew, I would tell you. I know someone who does, and I could transport him most if only I were big enough. Now, little did he know that Stan had the magic hold of the power. He lifted up his arm and did a wavy most all magic golden wording and he said if all the flies in the world were one fly what a big fly that would be transforming those their deep joy and then the fly said not only will i take you there but i will sing you a song too
Now the takeoff of the fly was of such force, the great velocity would escape several miles per several, just like a rocket in orbit. Now, after seven long days of coasty motion in this orbit field, they gradually came down through a gradient of fruity form, which is degrees, and flat on a belly cake land, if you'll excuse the expression of that. It was in a beautiful clearing before a lovely forry, leafy, leafy, leafy of that. And the fly, pointed towards the forry with a hairy forefinger gold, said, I must leave you now, Stan, but in there, mad John, and mark it the words. Not only will he give you the answer of the lost half moon, which is your great worry of it in your my load, but also he will give you the philosophy of life in itself. Now I must go now. Now Stan was very much appreciative of all this solving of his prop loads of the life itself, being a simple old man at heart, and he gathered the fly towards him in a cuddly way. It's going so big now that the whiskers protrude and tickle him in his ear goes, cause him both the chuckle the fly and a human laugh for that, and he left him. Now, and so he went on. <laughs> Crafted his eyes towards the background of this murky, inky blackness straight. And then suddenly he saw a slightly sort of ever fade of light which is surrounding most of the human form. Ah, it was Mad John. What? Long beard and beard and tangy. He must have been through to four years with hermit growth it and growth it on their sort of follicles as hair grown. And there was this long robe trimmed with a hermy motion, this radiated light all around this character of man who was obviously deep depth of knowledge in his both of form. And he said, um, ah, there's Wellcoat here, man. Where are you at, man? Ah, Stan, Wellcoat. You don't worry about that moon dangly man there, are you? He said, well, uh, yes, I, uh, mm, I was with Ah, he said, come with me. And he clasped him around the shoulder bowl with his long, fine, slender arm figure and walking him through the mouth that came looking up there. And Stan said, Oh, fully, fully moon there. And the man said, yes, Dan, oh dear. He said, you know what it is? Seven long days and there's answer to the moon which rotate in the orbit around you and it smote Dan through the eyeball like a seven-hound bloody hammer cropping him turf. <laughs> oh, dear. And so anyway, he said to uh, uh, Mad John, wasn't there something else which the fly transported me to sell you? Ah, yes, there is, he said. You just listen to this. Ah. Oh, live as best as I can. Now, how can I remember? 
Dale workload and read the newspaper load of that and had a wonderful party. The fly did a buzzy motion round the ceiling. Little boy Blue came and left his hormones behind and stuffed his corn there with his trumpet and brought his melotrophy. Oh dear, knees up Mother Brody, Huckleberry my thin bold, and he freaked them all out with an enormous mind blast. Which, oh dear. And then for the cool of the early morn, they gather it up and snooze him out. But stay cool, man, stay cool. Sets over Thailand, we say farewell to the small faces. <laughs> Next Friday night on Colony Pop, it'll be a group called The Eclection. Until then, it's good night. <laughs> Twist for a while.